Good afternoon. I'm Travis Klinger, uh, Senior Vice President of Addressability and Ecosystem with LiveRamp, uh, and a pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon to talk about the gold standard of 2021 uh, and how that's going to be trust and how we can activate consumer uh, forward first party data strategies. So with that, I'm going to jump in. We have a, a bit of a presentation. We're going to share a few slides of where we think the ecosystem is going, and then we're going to make sure to leave some time uh, at the end of this session uh, for Q&A as well. So what you're going to hear from me today, first and foremost, the digital ecosystem is undergoing a fundamental change. This is probably the most significant change that we've done as an ad tech community since the beginning of header bidding. And I think it's much more significant than that. The deprecation of the third party cookie, the changes around the IDFA, uh, probably future changes around the Android ID and the IP address are all going to change the fundamental way in which we identify users and serve them personalized advertisements. Second, this gives us a tremendous opportunity to build a new ecosystem. The third party cookie was never the most efficient identifier. You, we've talked as an industry about moving beyond a third party cookie for years, about building a better identity, about building a better infrastructure. Now the browsers and regulators are forcing us to make this transition. This is an incredible opportunity for us to make the open internet more competitive with the world gardens. And then finally, our first party data strategy coupled with piece of based identity is how we do this. This is what is critical for preserving marketing capabilities, for ensuring that the open internet has parity with the world gardens, and for ensuring that marketers can continue to address and measure uh, their consumers going forward. So digital marketing is at a turning point. We've had a whole bunch of changes over the past couple of years, and they're really all going to come to fruition over the next year. So the biggest change is cookie deprecation. Starting in September of 2017, we had Safari with the ITP, Intelligent Tracking Prevention, which blocked the use of third and first party cookies on Safari browser for third party tracking purposes. Then in September of 2019, Firefox rolled out enhanced tracking prevention, which also blocked the use of third party cookies on Firefox. And then in January of 2021, or sorry, in January of 2020, Chrome came out and deprecate, announced that they would deprecate their third party cookie on Chrome by January of 2022. We're now in December. In one month, we will be one year away from the deprecation of the third party cookie by Chrome. So 2021 is going to be our year of transition. We've spent 2020 planning and testing. And now as an industry, we must begin the transition away from the third party cookie. But it's not just a cookie that's changing. We've also seen massive increases in privacy regulation from GDPR in Europe to CCPA in the States to the recent CPRA to a new privacy law in Australia to an additional privacy law in Japan. We're seeing a wave of privacy regulation uh, on the horizon around giving consumers more access to their data and more transparency. We as an industry must lean into this way. We must embrace these privacy challenges uh, and we must say, how do we self-regulate above what the regulations are requiring us to do? How do we make it clear the value exchange that we are providing to consumers? And how do we make sure that consumers have full access and full transparency to their data? Then we had the iOS 14 changes. So announced in June of this year, uh, the IDFA will require consent. So when you download an app or when you uh, update your iPhone, you'll be prompted to uh, give consent to each app. We know that with location tracking consent, the opt-out rate is 70%. And we suspect that opt-out rate may be biased um, because several apps such as Google Maps, Uber, Lyft require that users share their location. So we expect the opt-out rate for the IDFA to be somewhere between 70 and 90%. This is going to have a significant effect on how advertisers connect with their users on iOS devices. And then finally, we have the DCM ID redaction. So this has been in the works for a couple of years now, uh, and is already in effect in Europe, where the exposure logs available from the DoubleClick ad server do not include user-level identity. We expect this to take full effect in March of 2021. Um, Google has reconfirmed this timeline. So we, we do not expect any further delays. This has been delayed a few times, um, but we don't expect any further. Uh, and so this will have a major impact on marketers who are measuring, who are calculating frequency. 
Uh, and so marketers need to look for exposure log opportunities that they can connect to offline data to have a full picture of the consumer without using the double click logs. So in summary, uh, it's a huge uh, change that we're going to see in 2021, starting with the deprecation of third party cookies, uh, moving into additional privacy regulations, uh, the iOS changes we should expect in early of 2021, and then the double click ID redaction as well. So what does all of this mean for us as a community? So first, it means that a lot of what we do today is going to break. These are major changes uh, and they really get to the core of how ad tech works. So when we look at audience activation and retargeting, these are based on the third party cookie. These are based on the um, device ID, the same with frequency capping and suppression. When we talk about media attribution, we're talking about click-through attribution. We're talking about the ability for post-click attribution. We're talking about measuring how many impressions drove a conversion event. All of this uses the third party cookie or the device ID. When we talk about building audiences, whether that's in our DMP using first party data or whether uh, that's building retargeting audiences um, or third party audiences, many of these are built on the third party cookie. And so these will also have an issue. And then when we talk about personalization, and the ability to personalize the user's experience so that when they land on a web page, they see a web page custom for them. This relies on the third party cookie. So, all of these marketing capabilities will break if we don't take action now. Now, the positive news is that the industry has been taking action, that we have been making changes uh, to make sure that these capabilities continue to exist for marketers in the future. So, what actions have we been taking? We see four leading solutions that have really come to play for the post cookie world. The first is hashed emails. So this is the idea that users share their identity and then the hashed email is passed through the programmatic bitstream. This solution has been proposed a few times uh, and generally uh, has been pushed back on by the industry. So there's a lot of security concerns around passing hashed emails directly in the bitstream or using hashed emails as a currency of identifier. At the end of the day, these emails are only one step away from PII uh, and creates a risk for re-identification and also for revealing consumers' uh, personal information. The second is fingerprinting. Fingerprinting has the capability of great scale. So fingerprinting is a probabilistic mechanism of using different browser signals, for example, the size of the screen, the user ID uh, agent, the, um, the IP address, and more, and using these signals to match to an identity, uh, a fingerprint of that browser. Um, the problem with fingerprinting is it doesn't present clear notice and choice to the consumer. There's not an easy way to opt out. And it also goes against the philosophy that the industry is leaning towards. Fingerprinting solves the scale problem. Uh, it provides great scale, but it doesn't solve the privacy problem. And first and foremost, as an industry, we need to be thinking about how we solve the privacy problem. We also have seen universal device identifiers. So the idea of programmatic tokens, we think that this solution will uh, continue to roll out and this will be a solution that marketers can buy on, where there's a universal token that represents a browser or a user's email address that is available out there this clear notice, this clear choice, this clear consent. So this is likely a way to convert those hash emails into instead a universal token. Uh, this would be more similar to the Trade Desk Unified ID 2.0. Uh, and so it's likely that there's a couple of these solutions out there as programmatic tokens uh, for marketers to buy on. And then finally, we see encrypted people-based identifiers as a solution coming to play. And so this is where LiveRamp plays. So with our ATS or authenticated traffic solution and our people-based identity, identity link, we enable hashed emails and phone numbers to be anonymously matched to a people-based identifier. We see people-based identifiers as the most competitive with the world gardens. At the end of the day, we should look at this ecosystem change, not just as replacing the third-party cookie, but as an opportunity for us to become more competitive with the world gardens and make the open internet more attractive to marketers looking to run their campaigns. 
So with that, we're going to dive in a little bit more around LiveRamp's philosophy of how we see this as an opportunity to build a better ecosystem with consumer trust at its core. So first and foremost, I think it's important to acknowledge that we are not solving a technology problem. The deprecation of third-party cookies, of course, is a technological issue and requires technology to solve it. But at its core, the reason the third-party cookie is going away, the reason there's so much regulation, the reason we're seeing device IDs go away is because we as an industry have lost the trust of the consumer and we need to regain that trust. The folks on this call this morning are people who help power the open internet. They power the free exchange of ideas and content. And all of you help contribute to that. And that's an incredible uh, thing that we do for consumers. We enable consumers to access free news, free content, wherever they like. We enable the free sharing of ideas. And we do this through advertising. And the consumers can see the value of this, but we've done a really bad job of explaining to it. So as we look towards building the future-proof ecosystem, as we look towards what comes after the third-party cookie, we have to put the trusted value exchange at the center of that. And that value exchange exists between individuals and publishers and individuals and marketers. And then ad tech and martech are the middleware that connect these trusted first party relationships on both sides together. So with that, last year, we launched our authenticated traffic solution or ATS, which enables publishers and marketers to connect their consented first party relationships together. So when you visit a publisher site, and the publisher asks for an email address or a phone number to log in or uses an SSO to log in, that identity can then be matched to our anonymous people-based identifier and then connected to marketer demand. What's important about this is it provides individuals with clear notice and choice. We're telling the consumer exactly what we're doing with the identity. We're explaining the value exchange to the consumer. We're making it easy for the consumer to opt out. We're creating encryption where every platform has a different identity so that there is no universal ID, so that this has full security uh, at the forefront of its thinking. And we're supporting it across not just display, but connected TV and mobile and app as well. Because we're not just solving a third party cookie problem, we're solving much, much more. As we look towards the future of connected TV inventory and eventually the internet of things, any solution we build needs to be inventory agnostic. And so we see this as building an end-to-end -end solution for marketers and publishers. Both marketers and publishers can identify consumers through this trusted value exchange across all of their devices. This can then be matched to LiveRamp's people-based identity, which can be passed through the bid stream via SSPs and, and DSPs. We have over 25 uh, SSPs on board using this technology today and over 45 global DSPs, including a recent partnership we just announced with the trade desk a couple months ago. And then marketers are able to buy this inventory on people-based identity, just like they buy inventory on the walled gardens on people-based identity, people-based frequency capping, people-based suppression, and people-based targeting. And then they're able to measure every impression that they buy. So when we talk about the deprecation of the DCM log, we're now able to give marketers something far better, the ability for every exposure log to have a people-based identifier on it and to measure every exposure that a market buys. Ultimately, we believe that ATS and people-based identity in the bitstream, and there will be other solutions out there as well. We don't see ATS as, as the only, but as the first, and ATS is designed to support other identities. But we believe these will deliver four major benefits for marketers. First, there's going to be enhanced privacy and security. Marketers, as they're looking at how they plan their post cookie world, should be asking themselves, is this solution privacy first? Does it work for the consumer? If I had to defend this solution, could I do so? We believe that ATS checks those boxes. Second, it offers precision at scale. It enables one-to-one -one targeting on a people-based level, just like the world cards. And it ensures addressability continues on the Chrome browser, but also expands incremental reach into Safari and Firefox, browsers that have been unavailable to marketers for some time. Further expands reach into connected TV and the valuable inventory that we're seeing rise there. Third, it offers improved attribution. As we prepare to leave the pandemic and see a vaccine over the coming months, we're still going to be in a world in a global recession. And that means that every dollar a marketer spends needs to be measurable and needs to drive a result. 
If you are buying inventory today and you're not able to measure the results of your inventory, it's kind of like throwing money away. It might work, but it might not. So we want to ensure that every marketer can measure every impression they buy. And then finally, we want to increase cost savings for marketers and we want to create a better consumer experience. So this guy is driven through people-based frequency capping and suppression. This enables more efficient investments, but also delivers a better consumer experience. No one wants to watch the same ad on their connected TV device four times in a row. No one wants to see the same ad a hundred times. They want to see the appropriate level of frequency across all of their devices. Marketers are targeting people, not devices. And now we as the open internet have the capability to enable them to do so. I want to talk briefly about a case study that we ran this past summer. We worked with the Fitbit brand, uh, the athletic brand, to do a control A-B test where we compared buying on the world's largest DSP third-party cookie and then buying on people-based identity. This was a four-week campaign extending over Father's Day, so June of the summer, uh, with a goal of reaching Fitbit's high-value audiences and driving conversions on the Fitbit site. The campaign was set up entirely the same, except for the identity at its core. When we saw the results, we were really impressed. Double the ROAS, so two times the return on ad spend when you buy on people-based identity versus third-party cookies. A 34% decrease in the cost per page view and a 13% increase in average order value. These are really impressive results. Today, we have dozens of campaigns running on Identity Link every day. We are still in the test phase, but marketers more and more are running their campaigns on Identity Link. And we now see continuous campaigns running on Identity Link, where Identity Link is becoming the choice of identity versus the third party cookie. So, what do we do as an industry as we look for 2021, as we have these final few weeks of December before we enter into this uh, year of massive change? We have a few ideas. First, it's important to remember what our goal should be for 2021. We have to improve consumer experiences. We've got to put the consumer first. We have to remember this is a trust problem. This is not a technology problem. We're not looking for a clever technological solution to replace the third party cookie. We're looking instead for a way to restore consumer trust to explain the value exchange. So everything we have to do has to have that in mind. We need to be establishing that clear and transparent value exchange. We need to be making it easy to opt out. We need to be making it easy for consumers to see and understand the data that we are collecting on them. Then we need to be able to make this connected. We need to be able to connect advertisers and publishers. Ad tech and MarTech are the middleware. Our role is just to connect disparate first party data relationships. And we need to be able to connect these globally. So as a marketer, when you're evaluating a solution, you should be asking, does this solution work in Europe? Does this solution work in APAC? Will this be a global solution that meets my global needs in the future? If not, you should reevaluate that. And then finally, we must use these solutions to increase effectiveness and efficiency in ROI. While we are making this change away from the third party cookie, it's important to remember the other threat to the ad tech ecosystem, the open internet. That's the walled gardens. Last year, 80% of every new dollar went into the walled gardens. The reason is they're 100% people based, they're 100% addressable, and they work. We as the open internet have 50% of a consumer's time and attention. We should be getting 50% of the revenue. Instead, we're getting less than 30%. So there's this opportunity to capture new revenue share, to bring marketers back to the open internet by showing that the, using identity, using addressability, we can create a similar buying experience to the work products, but with more transparency and a better consumer experience. So how we think you should do this today. First, every marketer needs to perform an audit of your marketing tech tax stat. It's important to go through and say, what tags am I using on page? What vendors do I use? And then ask each of those vendors, what are they doing when the third party cookie goes away? What are they doing when the IDFA goes away? How will their tag work? How will they distribute data? If you get a generic answer, if you get an answer of we have first party identity, or we've got you covered, dig into that. Folks who actually have a solution are going to have reams of technical documents that they can share with you. They're going to be able to jump in a call and whiteboard. For each marketer, the solution is going to be somewhat custom. We'll be leveraging uh, the vendor's solution, but it will then be customized to that marketer. So if you're not getting the details, it likely means they don't have a solution yet, and you should be reevaluating if that vendor makes sense. 
Second, you should adopt an identity and address-based solution that meets the following five criteria. We think these are so important. First, it needs to be neutral, open, and interoperable. Second, it's consumer first, privacy-centric. Third, it's people-based. We want to be competitive with the world guards. You want to have the buying experience of targeting people, not targeting devices. It needs to be omnichannel. We're not just solving a cookie problem. We're solving a connected TV problem and a mobile and app problem. It needs to be global and scale. And finally, it needs to be secure. We need to make sure that our new ecosystem puts security just as high as privacy. We don't want to have any consumer data leaks or re-identification. Then, as a marketer or a publisher, you need to start building your first party authentication strategy. How do you persuade users who visit your site today to share their identity with you? Perhaps there's a value you can offer them. If you're a publisher, that's content. If that's a marketer, maybe you could explore creating content on your site that tries value to consumers. You can explore offering consumers a deal. You can explore consumer newsletters. There's many, many ways to get authentication. So we're seeing some really clever tactics by publishers and marketers out there. And what's important here is that you test and optimize these. Each one's going to have different success rates for each marketer and publisher. You may find great success with newsletters while another publisher finds great success with text messages. The idea is of developing a way to have a value exchange with the consumer and drive authentications. And then finally, you need to evaluate all of your KPIs. Today, KPIs are largely based on cookie-based buying. But as you move to people-based buying, frequency capping, ROAS, all of these KPIs are going to change. So it's important to test what does a cookie campaign look like versus what does a people-based campaign look like? What were the differences in the KPIs? What other KPIs should I be measuring? This is a massive project. We have one year to go. It's important that we start this now. If you haven't started uh, following this checklist today, you're already behind. But there is the opportunity to catch up. There's the opportunity to move quickly this spring to start testing. As a marketer and a publisher, you want to be fully transitioned by the end of next year. So if you start testing this spring, you can be well positioned for that. And there's many companies who are willing to help you. Here at LifeApp, we're happy to do so. But there are also others out there, your agency, your consulting firms, who can jump in and can help you as you navigate these challenges. It's going to be a really exciting year in 2021. We have an opportunity to redefine the ad tech ecosystem and to make it better. But to do so is going to require a lot of work and a lot of change. So it's going to be an incredibly challenging year. It's going to be an incredibly tumultuous year. I'm incredibly excited because we have this opportunity to show that the open internet can continue to thrive. And I'm confident that we as an industry will achieve that. So with that, we want to open up to some Q&A. And there should be a Q&A box uh, that you guys can enter in on your screen. All right, and we'll wait a couple more minutes uh, for some Q&A. And then if not, uh, we can give everyone some time back to, to go grab a, a coffee uh, and a little break. All right, we have one. What is likely to happen to publishers who don't have first party data? So this is a really good question. I, I think we see a bifurcation of publishers. You're gonna have uh, publishers who have strong first party data assets and that's gonna provide authenticated inventory. This is gonna have the highest CPMs uh, and uh, you know best performing inventory out there. But this is probably only 30% of the internet. Even publishers who have authentications, it's not going to be across all of their uh, sites. So then instead, we're going to see that other 70% use a combination of solutions like the flocks, the federated learning of cohorts, the privacy sandbox is rolling out, and contextual targeting. These CPMs are likely going to be significantly lower than what we're experiencing today, uh, but then they can be combined and blended with the authenticated CPMs. So ideally, a publisher who doesn't have first-party data today 
and start working to achieve some level of that first party data, recognizing that the goal is not 100% logins, but instead the goal is getting some logins so that you have a blend of authenticated and contextual inventory to sell to marketers. Any other questions? All right, well, then I would like to thank everyone for taking the time this morning or this afternoon uh, for joining me for this presentation. Uh, you can find me on, on LinkedIn or reach out via email uh, if you do have any questions uh, and hope everyone has a fantastic holiday season. Thank you so much.